Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is Ruben and today we are going to talk about Teladoc Health. We'll focus on numerous things in this video. We'll start with the capital market summary, do a deep dive in this company and look at other things such as possible acquisition target, the financials and last but not least, the opportunity and the risks. Capital market summary. At the day of the recording, the stock is trading around 152 US dollars. The company took a hit recently because at the beginning of the year, they had a massively uh, run up to almost $300 and after that the stock went down dramatically. They have a market capitalization of approximately $23.5 billion and the price to earnings ratio is not visible. Yeah, so what is the company about? Teladoc Health is the global leader in comprehensive virtual care and they divide this into three segments. The first one is virtual care delivery. More than 70 million people uh, they have access to legacy uh, Teladoc Health solutions in the United States. 10.6 million of them, they have visits delivered by Teladoc Health clinicians and therapists in 2020. And more than 40% of the Fortune 500 companies, they use Teladoc Health. If you focus on the second part, they talk about provider enablement and more than 11K uh, care locations were used in the fourth quarter of 2020. The third part is focused on chronic care empowerment. The company is using a lot of data, which I will talk later about. And right now, they already have collected more than 1 billion data points. Well, last year, uh, Teladoc um, acquired Livongo. The transaction was completed on the 30th of October in 2020 for a transaction value of approximately 18.5 US billion dollars. Well, what is Livongo about? Livongo is a leading virtual care provider focusing on the management of chronic conditions. And they have uh, several flagship solutions in the diabetes management. You can think about hypertension, pre-diabetes and behavioral health. And the gist of it is the integration of the virtual care from Teladoc, combine that with the virtual care on the chronic diseases from Livongo and merge these two together. Right now, Teladoc offers a full spectrum of healthcare solutions. It can be anything such as care coordination, acute care, or a mental healthcare solution where you have to address stress, anxiety, and other conditions with therapy counseling and treatment, or a chronic care condition from Livongo, where you have to take charge of health challenges with monitoring and personalized support. Let's listen to the CEO, Jason Goravik from Teladoc Health, where he talks about the merger between Teladoc Health and Livongo during the pandemic and why this was needed. What we saw is the acceleration of the market. Uh, and I think it probably accelerated three to five years over the course of the last year. Um, just in terms of adoption, uh, maturation of what people expect from virtual care and what's possible. And, and that's both true from the consumer perspective and the provider perspective. And, and it made it such that I think I've always said, and, and you know, chronic care was in our roadshow slides when we were doing our IPO. So it's not like this was a brand new idea. What what acceler what happened was the acceleration of the market, the acceleration of the consumer expectations and the provider expectations made it so that this was not just an inevitability, but it presented urgency for us to do it right now, because this was the opportunity for us to capitalize on the moment and deliver on that promise of whole person care. And so what does that mean? You know, Livongo has this incredible capability of delivering very consumer friendly devices, whether that's for, you know, a blood glucose monitor or a connected uh, blood pressure cuff or a connected scale, collect the data and then apply data science to create really personalized, meaningful interactions that change consumer behavior and move the needle on their health and their ability to live with, to not just live with their conditions, but thrive with their conditions and live healthier lives. And, and they, they do this um, by, by having a, a very robust data platform and then marrying it up with a team of coaches who can interact with the consumer and delivering these personalized health nudges. But now, Bill, put that together with our 
suite of capabilities that we've just talked about, both on the physical side and the mental health care side, because, you know, untreated depression and anxiety lead to behaviors that exacerbate depression, that, that exacerbate uh, hypertension, that exacerbate diabetes, that get in the way of uh, weight loss, which of course leads to pre-diabetes uh, or pre-hypertension. Um, and so our ability to bring the right therapy together on the mental health care side improves the ability to have an impact on someone's chronic conditions. And now from a primary care perspective, you know, if you walk into your primary care doctor's office and they take your blood pressure, they're getting one point in time right? They're getting a single reading for one point in time. But what if you could get daily readings for the last month before the consumer virtually walks into your office and has an interaction with you? And we apply the data science against that, that combines with the information from your Apple Health Kit or your Fitbit or your or a sleep tracker to get a much more robust picture of you know, what's your lifestyle look like and how is your real health, not just your point in time blood pressure. I've got white coat syndrome. So I walk into the doctor's office, my blood pressure goes up by about 20 points. That's not helpful, right? So the ability to take all of that longitudinal data and then bring it together with both the technology and the human expertise really to me reimagines what primary care can be, what healthcare can be in a way that's quite frankly, more like it should be. And like the rest of our lives are today, where we're using technology to bring the best care to the consumer that's really personalized for them. Right now, Teladoc is in the process of realizing synergies and a 500 million synergy comes from these five opportunities. The first one is the cross-selling potential of the shared and unshared clients right now. The second one is international revenue that is driven through the Teletox uh, global platform. That's really uh, an opportunity for Livongo. The third one is the referrals to the Livongo solution that's driven by the visits to the Teletox virtual care platform. Uh, and if you focus on the fourth one, uh, there's improved member churn and more efficient enrollment. And you want to combine and optimize uh, the business model in this case. Whereas the last and fifth one is really focused on uh, cost savings. Livongo accelerates and amplifies Teladoc's key growth strategies. If you focus on the first point, expand footprint and distribution has to do with product cross-selling and upselling. Uh, you can also focus on clinical services innovation, such as chronic care from Livongo. Besides that, accelerate consumer adoption. That can be the virtual uh, first experience and, and broaden the role in healthcare delivery, such as in-home solutions. And in the next clip, the CEO, Jason Garvik, will talk more about data integration and scale. Data, data, data. If you're doing these millions and millions and millions of visits in the United States, all over the world, as we came through the pandemic, my daily feed was what was happening in China because China was a month ahead of us and we had Teladoc on the ground in China, picking up, talking, answering the phone, doing the video, getting the text every day, real time. The flu in this country, the traditional flu that used to kill 20, 30,000 people a year, tragic, terrible deaths, but, but you were able to get real time data. Just, just comment on the amount of data coming in and how it empowers you to make decisions and also to benefit public health. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. On, a, on a, a normal year, our flu tracker is ahead of the CDC's flu tracker because we see so many visits all across the country. Um, we, we did have early warning because we knew what was going on in China. We have about 50 people um, employed in Shanghai uh, who are servicing uh, clients in, in the, the market in China. Um, and in addition to that, you know, Bill, we're getting 2 million blood glucose readings a week, right? A week. So the power of all of that data together, that then we, we, we are, the, our job one in terms of technical integration is integrating that data into a single platform um, and a single, what we call a data lake 
so that we can mine that data for the best information to create the best health outcomes and deliver the best information to the physician who's treating that consumer such that we, we, we leapfrog what we've been able to do historically. And, and I, it, from, from my perspective, the, the data will continue to be, is now and will continue to be one of our greatest assets. And it's the benefit of scale, right? I mean, like we, we, have, we have scale that nobody else sees on a global basis you know, and healthcare isn't really delivered like that. We're, we're, there aren't global healthcare platforms. I think we might be the only global healthcare platform. And so the ability to bring all of that data together, I believe will continue to differentiate us, but also will continue to make sure that we add the most value for the consumers we serve and for the physicians who are treating the, those patients. In a quick overview, you can see that the healthcare costs in the United States have been increasing significantly, whether you look at the per capita in US dollars or the percentage of GDP that is spent on healthcare. For instance, if you look at 2000, 12.5% was spent on healthcare and this increased to 17% approximately in 2018. Regarding the total addressable market, uh, Teladoc made an estimation in your PowerPoint. On the left, you have the US telehealth member white space. In the United States, we have approximately 320 million as population, 73 million are Teladoc members as of the third quarter in 2020, uh, 65 million are potential users at current Teladoc clients, and the rest of this market is estimated to be 182 million. So in other words, uh, there is still a lot of room uh, for growth for this company. If you focus on the right, they made an estimation for US diabetes and hypertension market, like in the United States, 70 million people have diabetes or hypertension, whereas Teladoc, they capture 18 million of that. Uh, half a million are uh, Livongo enrollments, and the rest of this market is estimated to be 52 million people. A great acquisition target for Teladoc Health is called Dario Healthcare Corporation. Well, this company is a pioneer in the global digital therapeutics market with a focus on chronic conditions such as diabetes or hypertension. Well, it's a micro cap stock, and I did a video about Dario Health, and I will leave a link in the description for you to check it out. Well, at the time when I did this research, and uh, the CEO from Dario Health, he said that he wants to be acquired by a bigger healthcare company and this actually could be Teladoc. Do you think Teladoc is kind of, I mean, it seems like it's a growing position, um, your top position in the genomics fund um, regarding the potential to consolidate. Um, is that why you guys are, you know, convicted on Teladoc? What, and do you see Teladoc being able to be in that position to accelerate their lead? Um, yeah, what, what's the context or kind of, you know, background behind your Teladoc position? Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I kind of detailed it um, where, you know, if you are at the basically front end of the patient funnel and you can begin to deliver people a better um, kind of patient experience and um, get um, kind of from, from your exposure to those patients, manage to improve that experience over time, then that can create this kind of waterfall effect of, of kind of accumulating patients. Uh, and at the same time, and for from a cl clinician perspective as well, you can uh, get the doctors on board um, with using your platform, um, then you can um, solve a lot of inefficiencies in the market. Like if you talk to, there is, um, talk to any doctor about their electronic health records uh, management system, and you will, like, I've never talked to one that in, likes what they're using, right? So kind of like there is um, between solving problems for clinicians and solving problems for patients, there's just a lot of economic opportunity there. Uh, and, and, you know, inclusive of like a really um, chaotic and disjunct payer system in the U.S., uh, we think that they're well positioned. Mm -hmm. Regarding insider trading, uh, several people within the company, such as CEO and the directors, they have been selling shares recently. And the most notable thing that I wanted to point out for you is that Jason, the CEO, sold several shares on the 4th May of 2021 
after the earnings were uh, released. So that might be a little bit worrisome. Lisa Jill from JP Morgan asked a question about competition and Q&A in the last conference call. And I wanted to share this piece with you. And your first question comes from Lisa Gill with JP Morgan. Good afternoon, uh, Jason. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I just really want to start with your most recent thoughts on competition. Um, you know, as we think about some of the comments that you talked about displacing others with some of your business wins, uh, the idea of uh, whole care, talking about both employers well, as well as um, health plans looking for someone that has a deep embedded enterprise platform. Um, we get a lot of questions around how do we think about, you know, Amazon Care, the fact that MD Live has been sold to Cigna, Doctors on Demand and Grand Rounds coming together. So can you just maybe just level the playing field for who are you seeing when you're out there winning these pieces of business and how you think about how that competitive landscape has, has really shifted and changed over the last couple of years? Sure. Thanks, Lisa. Um, you, you know, we focus on our competitive advantages, and our competitive advantages, as you mentioned, are around the broadest set of clinical solutions ranging from acute uh, episodic to specialty care, chronic care, and complex care, as well as being across all of the customer channels ranging from employers to health plans to hospitals and health systems and on a direct-to-consumer basis. You know, more and more, and I think this is really characterized by the makeup of our pipeline, clients are looking for comprehensive multi-product solutions. They're not looking for point solutions that they have to integrate themselves uh, to stitch together and, and, and get the benefit of that. And I think the data that we talked about today about multi, multi-product usage and specialty usage in particular being a gateway and driving higher general medical visits uh, is, is the consumer proof point behind that. Uh, there's really nobody in the market who comes close to the comprehensive solution uh, for both acute, episodic, and chronic care, as well as the range of both digital and professional services uh, in terms of our clinicians uh, that we can bring to bear. And, and we see that uh, in our pipeline based on the fact that it's characterized by larger deals than we've ever seen before. Uh, Multi-product deals are sort of the preponderance of uh, the pipeline. And we see it in the competitive takeaways that we have booked, as as we mentioned uh, on the call, large East Coast uh, blues plan, as well as other very large opportunities uh, in the pipeline. With respect to the the moves in the market that that you've seen, you know you'll recall last summer when we announced the Livongo acquisition, we talked about the fact that the market had accelerated and that we foresaw the strategic chessboard moving and and ours was a move to put the leaders together in the market uh, to create an unmatched solution and, and bringing together in touch Livongo and, and Teladoc certainly does that. And, and there's, there, there is no comparable move uh, that, that we didn't foresee. In some cases, we've seen uh, success and increased interest as some of those smaller competitors have gone to health plans. And, you know, it, it, for the most part, one health plan doesn't want to buy from another competing health plan. Um, and then in other cases, uh, the, the moves in the market have been um, somewhat antagonistic toward the health plans uh, in an effort to disintermediate them. It's always been our view to work with the healthcare system, not against it, uh, and that's proven to be beneficial for us uh, as we align with our partners uh, and bring them greater value. So um, all of those, uh, those moves, uh, are sort of within the realm of, of what we expected. And, you know, I, I'm not going to call out individual solutions that you mentioned or, or competitors that you mentioned, um, but, 
you know, for the most part, many of them we almost never bump into, and some of the new entrants we're just not seeing gain traction. Yeah, the financial results in the first quarter of 2021 uh, compared to the first quarter of 2020, uh, revenue is up 151% year over year from 181 million to 454 million. And if you look at the adjusted EBITDA, this is also up uh, plus 430% year over year from approximately 11 million to 56.6 million. Regarding the access fees and visit fees, they are both up as well significantly. If you focus on the access fee revenue, it's up 183% year over year from 137 million to 388 million. If you focus on the right to visit fee revenues, it's up 24% year over year from 44 to 54 million. Yeah, now the revenue is split between the United States and the international market. In the United States, Teladoc is growing very rapidly at the moment. Um, 151 million to 416 million with a growth rate of 175%. And if you focus on the international market, it's growing slower. Uh, but it's still up 29% year over year from 29 million to 38 million. The fact that revenues are going up is actually a very good thing. However, if you focus at the total expenses, they are going up significantly as well. Uh, total expenses are up from 201 to 202 million to 538 million. Zooming in on the operating expenses, Advertising and marketing is going up massively as well from 32.5 to 98 million. Sales, sales is going up as well from all, almost approximately 18 to 65 million. Technology and development is up and general and administrative and depreciation as well. So they are also spending a lot of money. Regarding the recent trends of this company, there's one concerning thing that I want to mention here. At the top right, uh, you can observe that uh, the US paid members has not grown significantly uh, over the last year and is stuck around 51.5 million members. And then the key operating metrics, uh, the visits as well as United States and international visits, they have been growing. Utilization has a positive trend as well. And if you look at the Livongo member data points cumulative, it also has a very positive trend. Yeah, and lastly, the opportunity and the risks. I wrote several things down for you when reviewing this company. First of all, Teladoc is a leading global digital healthcare provider. Uh, I like the CEO, uh, he's really visionary and is already like 12 years at this company, so he knows what he's doing. There are like three very important things that I want to mention here for you. The first is the power of the company lies in vertical and horizontal integration in chronic diseases as well as acute management. So you have this integration aspect. And the second thing that's by far the most important thing is the data aspect because data is and will be one of the greatest assets of Teladoc in the future. And the third thing is that Teladoc will benefit from economies of scale. I really believe that in this industry, in the future, that some form of consolidation will take place and that smaller companies will be bought out and that you have fewer, bigger companies left because economies of scale make healthcare uh, cheaper and these healthcare costs are increasing over time. Besides that, uh, I can mention that in the next two to three years, there will be a focus on uh, increasing the scope of the clinical conditions, uh, such as chronic kidney disease. CEO mentioned that. There will be more partnerships. They are expected. For instance, bringing Livongo capabilities uh, to the hospital. Uh, there's continued advancement in home diagnostics. And the CEO mentioned in the conference call that there will be a future focus on international expansion because we saw that in the United States the growth rate was significantly, but internationally there is still like a big room for growth. And they already signed a strategic partnership with Generali in Hong Kong. Yeah, and then the risks. The first one is US membership growth is more or less capped at the moment and the growth has really has to come from the international market. So I'm like very curious, like how do they want to succeed in that? Uh, realizing the synergies, also known as the integration between Livongo and Teladoc, 
that uh, takes time uh, in the conference call a question was asked about that and ceo jason said well early 2022 uh, there was a new use design expected and the first step is you can access the livongo through the teladoc app and the last thing uh, which we saw earlier is like uh, the expenses they're like really growing as well and they had a higher financial loss in the last quarter so like how are they going to manage all these expenses you know because they have to control this and as a final remark should you buy teladoc stock or not well i bought the stock at least one year ago i'm happy with the position I'm holding, but my holding period is at least five years. I think in the short term, the focus is really going to be on the growth, the synergies and expenses. If there is a hiccup in one of these three, then uh, the stock might take a hit. But if you really have this long term focus for Teladoc and you really believe in this aspect of uh, virtual healthcare and that they can grow internationally, that they can realize these synergies and get the cost under control, then you can buy this company. But again, hold it for the long term don't go like for one year because maybe there are other opportunities that are better for you in the short term thank you everyone for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and that you actually learned something about this company and see you on the next one